So there have been a lot of questions sent in by people who are watching the podcast who are saying, be more specific about the demon situation because they have certain demons that they think are persistent in their life and demons that are part of their everyday psyche. From a personal perspective, the reason and the way I think about demons the way I do in terms of how I've made it work for me is I believe I have demons, inherent demons in my life, and I've been able to control those demons and find a way to manage those demons so that my life isn't the mess that it was seven or eight years ago. So now I know that to keep that one particular demon quiet, which is a drugs and alcohol demon, <laughs> do you understand? No, no, I'm making it very, very specific now. Yeah. I know to keep that particular demon quiet, all I need to do is stay in a positive mindset. I need to do good things. I need to go to gym. I need to be surrounded by positive people. I need to constantly focus on the positive aspect of my life. So that that demon is bored and he stays in the cupboard where he belongs, which is the way it works for me. I know if I go back to drinking, if I go back to doing those things again, that demon is rubbing his hands with glee, going, oh, I can't wait to get out. I can't wait to do my thing. Because he was a fun guy. Right. He was, so we think at the time. Right. So I think what the questions have been telling me or asking us to explain in further detail is these demons, we have them in our life. We, how do we keep them under control? How did, they, how did this happen in the first place? Okay, so let's go back because you're asking so many questions. Yes. So, and these are... And just remember, this is from my perspective. Of course. Right? Listen, we should maybe just have that comment very, very quickly. Everything we are talking about here is from our perspective. Right. right. Nothing is, this is the lay of the land. This right. is the rule of the land. This is from our perspective. Right. This is just from our perspective. Which is why this makes it so interesting between the two of us. Right. Because my perspective is sometimes very different to yours. But, no, but, but that's a good thing. Yes. Because that's sheer reality in this podcast. Reality It is, has to be. Yes. It okay. has to. It has to. Has to, get, to be. I want to get that out the way because people think we, we we disagree with each other on a lot of things, which I don't. I don't think we do. I think we agree about the end point on almost all of these situations. We just have a slightly different way of getting there. I or actually don't think we disagree on anything. Me too. Because me too. I literally heard one of the podcasts and I heard myself laugh, 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 <laughs> laugh, 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 and I said, "I think I'm laughing too much." But then on Saturday, you and I were just talking. I was laughing just even more. That's our relationship. Yeah, totally, totally. So the totally. details are being taken care of right in the laughter. But Dwayne's asking such great questions here. So I want to go in and answer that from what you were talking about because yes. you and I have had this conversation oh, yeah. before. Yeah. And so here we go again. This is all about how you interpret, you know, your angel and your demon. And so now you just made it so easy for me to explain why I don't one, I don't believe in demons, yes. and why I say that because it, it, there's it, sometimes it can be like contradiction. Yes, um, and I, I mentioned that there is only so for Vanda's term. I want to explain. There's only just one, think of like one God, one one source of light, one 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 big big conduit where everything is. From the light, everything is from love. And then out of that comes all the experiences, mm-hmm. right? So you can't be in two places. Science, science gives us all the answers. Right. You can't be in two places at the same time. Sure. Unless you're traveling, right? Unless you like, unless you like mastering... Um, Travel, time, travel. time traveling, and you're or, mastering, or you know, multiple universe, dual multiple universes, universes and all that. But the beauty of us on this planet is that we come in with free will and we come in to live this life. Yes. And Dwayne's life is Dwayne's life right now. But there's a lot more to Dwayne than what Dwayne realizes. Okay. So when you're saying, first, our beliefs are so powerful, and we've addressed this, you know, where do your beliefs come from? Are, they, are you hanging on to beliefs that you've been um, morphed into? Are you believing beliefs that they're truly your beliefs or if you just adopted them and you haven't cleaned up the house? Like, don't go to Dwayne's closet. No. There's a demon there no. waiting to party. Totally. <laughs> there I go so again, over, laughing. Over five years. He's been so bored. You've so, got no idea. So for Vanda, so what I'd love to do is go, go clean out your closet. Mm-hmm. Because 
your whole stream is benevolent. Now, in saying that, if you feel you have a demon, it's because you're just off course. You're just off course on where you have come from. That's the best way I like to explain it, right? So we come from love. Do we feel love all the time? Well, those are our emotional guide and set points, right? But that's not what you're asking me. No. You're telling me I have to put this demon in a closet because he's a bit destructive. Yes. He went into the, into the alleys of that darkness and he brought me certain experiences. So what you're doing is you're creating a split personality mm -hmm. between you're calling yourself, well, there's a demon in me. No, there's no demon in you. There's an experience in you that has a memory and that memory hasn't been able to counteract or come back into alignment. That's why alignment mm. is such a great conversation. Sure. On the other side of it, you know, we talk about the importance of clearing and understanding the language we're carrying and what we're saying and what you're doing and what you're saying. I have to keep him in the, in the closet. Mm. I said, and I'm like, this is not the age to keep anything hidden in the closet because you can't fake this one. No. This is the age of Aquarius. This is the age of awakening. Everything that's in the closet, outside the closet, under the carpet, mm -hmm. underneath the, 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 the blankets, it's all coming up mm -hmm. because it has to come into realization or it's coming into clearing. So, because Vanda loves Dwayne, she's going to say, hey, purify that, that what's in the closet. Yes. Because you're already a fun guy and you have free will and you've already got the, those experiences brought you those lessons. Sure. Oh, I'm a very big believer in that, that that particular demon brought me a lot of good lessons that I'm still using today. Right. And more so than before. Right. Just to leave from yours, just, I don't want to interrupt you, but I want to ask you a question about that. Do we not use the demon terminology right. as a way to understand this? Of course. So we go, it's a Some demon. People it's do. a demon. We have a demon. Some people don't. I mean, some churches use it. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. depends who it is and depends who you are. Okay. You know, we can go, oh, you know, my demon can be, have no attachment. Mm. Go to some churches, they use the demon like a fear factor and there are, people are paying. You know, people are paying dearly for that belief. Right. So no right and wrong. Mm -hmm. You're allowed to whatever beliefs you're allowed right. to, but you have to be responsible for what you believe in. Mm -hmm. And you've got to start being responsible for what you've got in the closet. Because you can't deny the, the manager of our world. Mm -hmm. And until I'm proven wrong, okay, and I don't need to be proven wrong, because no, you asked me who's Vanda. Vanda's like one with my source and my God and my light is just one. And not that you're not. not you all. are two. So I know what you're How Vanda expresses herself is just the way she expresses herself. And I come with a lot. Yeah. You know, I come with huge cultural influences. You know, we come from Africa. We deal with our witch doctors, our Songomas, our, our Tokolosi, uh, that, yeah. you know, our African cultures sleep on high-risen beds. beds. Yeah. Why? Because of the Tokoloshi. Mm. It's coming at night. Mm. Mm -hmm. So that's their way <laughs> of managing that particular demon, that Tokoloshi. Yeah. If they are that so high off the ground. So it's fears. Is, it is fears. And the last thing... I think where I'm seeing a certain congruence in terms of the way we're talking now is that you said take responsibility for that that demon or your thought as to how you see that demon and how that demon operates. So I'm saying, but for me, again, making it about personal experiences to make it slightly more relatable. Right. My management and my coping mechanism and my responsibility is to keep that guy under lock and key. So you're blaming the demon? Not at all. I'm saying it's just simply a part of me no, 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 no. Here's the thing. I take full responsibility for my actions, but I believe that there's a part of me. Right. There's a part of me that definitely has the ability to encourage the demon and has done. And I have done in the past where I've gone. But we do. Not, that's what I'm saying. So in a very practical example, very practical, real lived life experiences, right. people cope with these demons, whether it's superstitions or it's right. drugs and alcohol or it's fear of heights or right. whatever it is. It can be anything. And, you know, the thing is that it's always in the eye of the person that's seeing it. Yes. Okay. And then it has to be your ability to understand 
where you are coming from and that you're growing and evolving. I used, I, I used to be so scared of the dark, right. okay, that I used to put my finger in the air and I believe my finger in the air touched God's finger and it lit so up. So it protected you outside? Yeah. I or believe that my area. finger in the air, okay, okay mm. kept me safe. Uh-huh. Check that belief mm. out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Until I, I ran across a mirror and saw my own reflections screamed and all of that. Can I tell you, my, I'm <laughs> going to tell you my darkness story in that case. I was scared of the dark, petrified of being right. outside in the dark until I was probably 25 years old. Right. And when I was 13 or 14 years old, my father would say, go and close the garage right. outside. He would have to threaten me with violence to get me. <laughs> At 18 years old, I wasn't scared of anything, but I was scared of the dark. It was the most ridiculous because thing. Because the darkness ridiculous. instills our consciousness. Mm. And then there you go, what thoughts are you got in your cupboard? What is under your bed? How many times have you thought that there was? I even, when I was young, bed. I wouldn't even sleep with my foot off the edge. <laughs> but that's also like the movies we've course, watched, the stories we've course, been told, how we've been brought up, mm-hmm. religious factors, mm-hmm. stories of, you know, sure. our growing up sure. segment of all of that, sure. all of it. Sure, but at the same time, I think – to give it a label, and I think this is a human being thing, right? right. We give something a label, we, right. know it, we know where it belongs, right. where to put it in the shelf, right. when it can come out. It's like putting away your winter clothes. Right. These are my winter clothes. So you put them in the suitcase for the duration of the summer, you put them in a the cupboard. They don't, oh, we'll need them next winter, I'll take them down again. So that's understandable for me. But, but if that's... I go to my closet <clears throat> and I've got all these clothes at the same time, it's confusion. But if I yes, put my clothes away. Yes, but this is where we are. Yes, I know. We are in that space because now we're able to move away from winter and go into a summer destination in a brink of a moment. Yes. Those, the, our, our ability to, to manipulate mm. our seasons, and we're doing it through our food. We're eating fruit that is out of season. So this manipulation is going on throughout everything. Yes. You know, we're eating out of season fruit. We are being, we are out of rhythm with our own cycles. We are out of tune with our own natural beings and desires and needs. We are on such a a bubble year, mm-hmm. you know. So, and we can get like really, really uh, expansive in this conversation. But I do know that everybody's wanting to talk about that. That reality of that thought form that drills that fear. That darkness. Of that darkness. And I want to tell people that if that darkness is there, then it's time for you to roll up your sleeves and for you to really, really understand where you're praying from because you might be feeding something that you're not even aware of because demons are are projections of mind and thoughts and fears. There is no goodness in any demon, be it a thought, be it a feeling, be it a, an action, be it a, a memory, be it whatever. There's no benevolence in that, right? And so what I like to believe in is that every fear that comes up is looking for a place of enlightenment. Mm-hmm. So you having the capacity to deal with your own fears step by step brings out, you know, other things into your being and understanding why these things are so important. Right. And people are ignoring our cosmic dance and constellations of arising planets and influences and galactical interferences and, you know, our own spiritual ev- evolution with the science that is going on right now, especially with this AR. Mm. You have to have discernment. You need to know what is coming from a, a space of the mind and what's coming from a place from the soul. And the soul meaning, meaning it comes from a place of love. So it's so vital because lives get lost yes. without them having the ability to get back mm. to their core. Mm. And that's why you talk about put that demon in the cupboard mm. until you've got yourself realigned to a place where you can deal with that and stay true to your core, you know? And I maintain to stay this, say this, you know, those alternative states of mind like drugs, alcohol, sex, uh, gambling, gossiping, whatever. gambling, whatever yeah. those lower frequencies and all, they're just going to expose what's there. 
Oh, I completely agree with you. I don't think it gives you something you never had. You right. always had that. It just unleashes that in you. Yeah, but so, you. and we, you and I have spoken about sure. this. Yours sure. just unleashed more of a fun guy. Absolutely. So you you never went into being like a uh, an ugly drunk or a or or or, or, a, or a, a mean no, person. No, no, no. You no, just no. became kinder no. and kinder and kinder. And, <laughs> Well, I think I thought I did. Maybe, maybe. You might ask certain people who feel very different about that. But I just... Yeah. The truth is, what I want to ask you is this. It just changes. Just remember that. It does. It does. Oh, it does. Constantly. But you say you come from a place of light and everything for you is that source of light. We that, all do. No, no, no. I agree with yeah. you. But you particularly, you wonder. Because this is something I think people will be thinking. Surely in your life... You have darkness come into your life. You have dark moments come into your life. All the time. Exactly. Now, I'm going to ask you a super, super practical question. Right. How do you, Vanda, deal with that darkness when it comes to you? It's not your demon. I would call it a demon. You call it the darkness. So let's just agree on darkness. Right. How do you deal with that in a real world situation? I'll give you an example. Road rage happens to you. Darkness. It unleashes a demon in me, which is bad, It depends bad where rage. I am. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to make it very general. If you're in it South depends. Africa, there's a different meaning to this entire. Right. But you're on the highway. You're on so the I'm I-75. On the highway. You're on the I-75. Somebody cuts you off, dangerously so. There's a darkness that comes over you. You get a certain amount of temper. I'm just assuming that this is what so happens So I've, I've had all scenarios happen to But me. now, how do you deal with that darkness? Okay, so Vanda knows. So Vanda knows that if, so, if, if something's happening to me, it's because I'm, I'm vibrating that. So I already know that, right? Right. Okay, so it's like it's a tough one because if I'm attracting the guy that's pulling the zaps on to me, then I'm like, okay, Vanda, you know, for Vanda, she has a whole different list of things that she does. Right. You know, how I deal with myself is, you know, I take my soul baths, I take my sticks, I yeah. do my stuff, I yep. breathe, uh, I pray. You know, I, there's, I have like a long list of stuff right. that, that I do. And a lot of the times I don't have the time to do that. Yes. Right. So if you catch me in that moment, it all depends on where I am. Mm -hmm. Like I get disturbed, Okay. If I'm not able to maintain my my poise, my composure. Oh, I can see that. Yeah. But I've also experienced, mm -hmm. I've also, I have to tell you this. Please. I've also experienced like sometimes energy is like playing tennis, right? Sometimes you just gotta you've just gotta uh-uh. No. No, 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 no. I'm just not having it. No, it's just like just no, 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 no. Like, I remember I saw this guy, and I, but I saw, do you know when you know this, that guy's coming? Because I could see the cars and I could see whatever, and he was just, you, you could, you, I, I can feel it. Okay. And I'm like watching, and I already had programmed in my mind, watch, this guy's going to do something to me, right? I, I, I just projected it. Yeah. So I was waiting for it, Right. So I was waiting, waiting, waiting for it. Anyway, it comes past me, not even like, it didn't even look at me sideways. I was like, hmm. I had a, I had a, a word that I used in my vocabulary, like From chicken. The good old days. Yeah, like chicken. I don't know where you we, call, we call them. We call them something else. Well, in South Africa, we call them pussies. We do. We do. <laughs> That's just There'll how be a guy. detailed description down below right. after the podcast. <laughs> right. But guess what okay. happened later? Yeah. I had somebody that literally went, oh, hooting at me and doing all the stuff. And I was like, hey. But I had already, I had already projected that. I was already waiting yeah. for somebody to like come past right. me and say something. So who was it? Okay. So the only way I know how to deal with that mm -hmm. is to take full responsibility for and it. And to prevent it from happening in the first place. So it's, that's really what you're saying. So don't put yourself in that negative space. But if you do, you take responsibility for your part in it. Because right, because it doesn't always show up. Person. Yeah, it doesn't always show up when you think it's going to show up. This I agree. So that's why not a good idea to keep those demons in the cupboard because mm. you never know when you might open the door without realizing that the door's open.
again, but even taking responsibility for that particular action that right. you do know. Right. Exactly. Because it's so true, though, and I agree with you with so much of it, because very often in, in a person's life, somebody will say to you, you're not in a good space at the moment. Nothing good's going to come from this. Nothing good. Somebody will say to you, right. an outsider will say, right. nothing's good going to Nothing good is going to come from this space. So if it doesn't feel good. No, but that's what I'm saying. Right. And, but then you, I would, in the past, my brother would do it to me and say, listen, I can see chaos is coming your way and it's going to happen soon. It's going to happen soon. So give me another word for that. And give me another no, explanation. No, 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 what I'm saying is, and then it did come true. And he would say, I told you it was coming. I told you. It was a specific certain something about my life that would play itself out. So you had momentum. Yes, but what would happen is he would see that this momentum is building. Uh, my temper would be a little bit short. I would be a little bit short with people. I would be a little bit more sensitive to certain situations. You right. said, shit's coming. There's going to be shit in your life, and it's coming. And I'd go, oh, stop it. Stop it. Within a two-week period or a three-week period, the shit would come. And he, and he would giggle sometimes because, yeah. I saw yeah, but that happens now, to I'm, all of us. But yes, but in my own self. Yeah. So what did you do? Well, but what, what I'm saying is, when somebody says that to you, how do you then go, Whoa, because it takes a certain amount of very acute self-awareness right. to go, okay, let me listen to what he's saying. Because right. in that moment, when I'm feeling the way I'm feeling and I'm headed in that direction, right. the last thing I want to do is hear what he said. Of course, no one else. But if would, I no listen one to what he said, right. possibly I could have interrupted the flow of that particular energy right. and said, ha! Ah, so how do you interrupt that? That's what I'm asking you. That's exactly the question I was asking you about being in the car with the road rage. How do you interrupt that energy? The quickest way for you to interrupt any of that is actually what takes it's the hardest thing to do and that is for you to literally stop and breathe because we're not even breathing we are reactive and responsive yes. okay um you stop and you breathe and you literally interrupt and you bring that breath and you make sure that that breath literally comes from the top of your head all the way down and in you just doing that, it slows everything down. And then you're able to go, worth it, not worth it. You have to feel what's worth it and not worth it. Some things are worth it. Absolutely. Some things are worth you knowing. You have to discern nowadays. It's not even like being reactive. You have to know. You have to weigh yourself. And you're saying this. Is it time for me to stand up and be courageous and support myself? Or is it time for me to answer back and say no? Is it time for me to step back? Is it time? Because so many people are just stepping back. You know, you, it's just a vacuum of different yeah, things. I'm so scared of There's it. not one answer for yeah. anybody. You know, is it worth you keeping your demon in the cupboard? Maybe. Is it worth is it gonna is it worth you keeping your demon in the cupboard forever? Mm. Maybe. I don't know. Sure. But I do know this. You can't stop law. And if you're carrying something, mm. and if you're fearful of something, mm. guess what? Sooner or later, it has to rise because it has to come for, up for enlightenment. That's the age of Aquarius. We're not escaping this. Everything is moving in momentum. There is very, 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 very few young souls on the planet right now. We mm. are all like yeah for a very specific reason. We're all yeah knocking at the door and going, we need more of ourselves. We need to know that we're more than who we are. We need to pay attention. We have to have a spiritual responsibility, which people are going, huh? What are you talking about? Yeah. I'm like, which is a good question when they ask you something like that because yeah. it's a very broad statement. Right. And, you know, I said, oh, well, this is the demon. But people are talking about the demons and blaming the demons and not taking responsibility and doing exactly the same thing. Yeah, no, see, I don't think the one works out one works without the other. If you've got a demon and you accept <clears throat> that demon, you have to take responsibility for that demon and right. your particular, it's like the two wolves. You know the parable about the two wolves? Right. Which one wins? Well, the one you feed the most. Yeah. So that's really, that's what's going to happen. Right. So if I don't feed that demon, right. oh, I've got him under control, but I'm responsible for that guy. Yeah, you never have a demon no, no, under no. control. I, that's, <clears throat> what, that's the beauty of it for me. Right. Because that means I'm never no. going to waver in my strength against that particular demon. Right. So, so much so that you go, Hold on a second. If I give, because that particular demon is, as we know, so powerful. Right. If we align. Okay, so inch, let's talk about why is it powerful. Mm, yes. Because that's, people that are. That is interesting. Yeah, why is it powerful? But you, you, you're accepting what I'm saying, though. If I give I'm that, listening to no, you. But if I give, no, no, no. But in terms of me explaining my understanding of this, is if I give him an inch, he's got me. So he's yeah, but that's your me. belief. Exactly. So now you so say, I, so my thing, if I, I believe I have a demon, I give them everything and I see them hanging themselves. So, but that's different beliefs, you I, see? Sure. Gotcha. So gotcha. Or you've got to end. I, I can't even relate to that statement. I know, right? No, I can't though. Yeah, but that because for me, 
That's how I dismantle yeah. everything. Yes. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm a spiritual warrior. You guys are warriors too. You know, you're going to do things in your way. What I see the biggest gaps and doorways into demon world is that people are not honoring who you are. You don't know who you are. You're giving up your essence. You're giving up your gold. You're not being true to you. You're being disobedient. You're not listening. You don't know anything. And then you're like, well, I've just lost against the demon. No, you weren't even in the game. I know. That's... I, I do you understand what I'm saying? Totally, totally. So you ask me I how agree. I would do it. So mm, when mm. I, it's like, so I have, I've been in certain situations where I feel the demon's not even mine. Okay. And now all of a sudden I'm dealing with this thought form that's overrunning my mind and over, what do you do? What do you do? Because you have to pay attention. A thought is just a thought, but that thought is going to do everything it can to become an action. Become an action. Yeah. Right. Sure. And then, so I'm an old school girl. You know, I come from uh, just an old school girl. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I'm big on cleansing. I'm big on 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 the old the old ways. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm still like I love my pa- paper and pen. I love I love still striking that match, lighting up the candle. You know, it's just you've got to know who you are, and there's nothing wrong with and you know being all you digital. Completely. You've got to see why it works for you. Who are you? What are you doing? Because this world is for everybody. Okay, and this is why we choose this planet. Because Earth is our chosen planet. It's the greatest school right now in the whole of galaxy of galaxies. Our universe. This is it. Planet Earth is the place where you come to get free will and you're learning about everything. That's why it's so tough at the best of times because everything is here. But there's no cheating. And people are like, ah, oh, ha, ha, ha. It's not. What do you mean? What do you mean? There's... You've got to cut, you have for your lessons. Sure. And we're not going to be able to escape those lessons. Yeah, they're, they're, they're going to find us. You can't like... escape Dwayne. No, no, sure. Okay, Dwayne's well, I've coming come to for accept a... that. I've come to accept that. Yeah. Yes, of course. You, you, you yeah. come here to accept Dwayne. You've got to be Dwayne. And if you're not Dwayne, Dwayne will stay on as a ghost to be Dwayne. Because you're never going to be Dwayne again. This has been fascinating. It's a fascinating <laughs> conversation. It, it really is. And I, I have a very strong feeling. I said I wasn't going to laugh, but... Come on, you got to laugh. It's the face. Come on. I think it's a fascinating conversation on so many levels, and I think it's also something But it also triggers continue. so much fear. What, the conversation? It, people all get... They get frozen into like, oh, my God, what are you talking about? Okay, I get that. Because the mind doesn't comprehend it. I get it. that. But the good thing about... See, now, this is where... I believe in acknowledging that fear, we then have a way to overcome it. Right. So, so I think by oh, sending in questions about, okay, well, the demon, I've got this demon, I'm scared of my demon. And those are great questions because it, this conversation leads us to understanding that as long as we acknowledge that demon and our understanding of what that demon is, right. yours or mine, right. how we manage that demon, your way or my way, right. that is take responsibility for that demon and your decisions with, to do with that demon or darkness. Right. And then you have a step forward. Then you have a way of getting closer to understanding how to manage your own self. And But really what I've got from you today is be true to yourself. Make decisions that are true to you and the real essence of you. And less know, and less of the darkness will show up. Know who you are. Yeah. And then be true to that. And yeah. learn to understand what your truth is. And then, and then allow the changes to come through because then yeah. your truth changes. We've got to finish with a statement my dad always used to tell me. What's that? Always be yourself. It's the rule for life. Always be yourself. Is that what your dad said? But listen to why. There was a caveat. Yeah. Always be yourself. And this is not only my dad. My dad launched it to me. I then found out that many people have said this. Yeah. Always be yourself. Because everybody else is taken. Yeah. That's and amazing. And it's so true. Yeah. It's so true. So we have something in common that we're not only are we from Alberton. Yeah. But my dad's message. You know, my dad's... Uh, for those that don't know, my dad's... Uh, uh, um, a medium and a channel and an incredible healer and an incredible human being and still a strong, strong spiritual force that is continues with me and and with everybody that he loves. So I used to come in my moments of desperation to him and like, okay, you have to tell me, what's my message? Who am I? He goes, Filia, which is daughter, just be yourself. I'm like, that's it? That's it? You got everything to tell everybody else. Nah, but to me, that's it. That's it. That was the best advice you ever gave. Like, you. be yourself. I agree.
I'm like, sure. And that is exactly where we're ending today's episode. But I'm going to add one thing. If you do like anything about this conversation and conversations like this, I'm going to ask you if you're watching now to hit the subscribe button, to hit the like button, to put on your notifications. I'm saying all this stuff that Vanda just cannot bring herself to say. Just press the button. Press all the buttons you possibly can <laughs> because these conversations and ones like right. it are going to continue. Absolutely. It's been another real treat, Vanda. Mm, Thank awesome. you so much. You're awesome. Next time. That was great. That was fantastic. Hey? That was fantastic.